I think people are slowly coming in. And as you can see in the background, we are also performing an announcement for a closing of this year as we are coming close to end of our uh, 2021. Uh, we are preparing for you a great retrospective and a future outlook. So for 2022 and what comes in the future for Power BI with a few of the great speakers there. So Jeffrey Wang as I would say father and inventor of Dax language. Then uh, Melissa Coates uh, will join us uh, talking about data governance together with Matthew Roche. And then the part about visualization with Pratika Masani and uh, together also with Nikola Illich. So it will be a great session on 22nd of December. Stay tuned and you will be sharing a lot of uh, details. Uh, it will be go. It will be going live on uh, as, as a broadcast on YouTube and LinkedIn. So lots of announcements will come around this. And so yeah, again, welcome. Just a reminder that session is being recorded. And just one news here. So we have changed the, our YouTube channel. So for a while now, videos and recordings from uh, user groups will come also in the German Power Platform uh, channel. But now we have our own Power Platform Stuttgart user group channel. So come and subscribe and stay stay tuned with the latest uh, recordings from the sessions. Your hosts for today, Christian, myself again, if you have any questions regarding user group, any suggestions, uh, maybe speaking wishes, uh, just reach out to us on LinkedIn, mail, Twitter, wherever. And just before the last we announced, before closing the year, we still have a few sessions uh, starting from next week. So Thomas Mertens uh, next Wednesday with a session about sharing. Chris Wagner with his session, how to become a data god. Then Michael Kowalski, Michael Kowalski from uh, Microsoft talking about best practice analyzer and best, uh, and uh, his uh, new features for best, best practice analyzer. So it will be interesting one and closing the regular sessions for this year with Alexander Arvidsson with five ways of how to misinterpret your data. So it will be action packed before we close the year with a, with a big uh, panel uh, I announced in the beginning. But let's, th those are all the sessions that will come in the future. But for today, I would like to welcome again Avinav, join us late in the evening from India and he will be talking about working with Power BI live data sets and data flow. So Abhinav, welcome. Stage is yours. Thank you so much, Agustin. Uh, it's amazing uh, to be a part of this uh, uh, amazing user group. Uh, I have been following it and uh, uh, really amazing content. A lot of learnings from this platform and really glad to be here uh, to have this opportunity to share something uh, with the wider community. So uh, I'll, I'll start sharing my. Yeah, we can see it now. All right. So uh, as we see, uh, uh, the today's topic would be we'll be starting from connecting Power BI to live data sets. Uh, what our use cover is uh, uh, separating model and report connected live. So starting from scratch, uh, our current Power BI report will take up a sample Power BI report and see how we could separate out its model uh, instead of you know uh, directly trying to work with connected live data sets so that we understand how we are able to uh, separate out the model altogether. Uh, we'll also move to see how to restore the Power BI, uh, that uh, file that we'll separate out with live data sets in service 
then create multiple reports from live data sets. Also using live data sets with Power BI paginated and uh, using Power BI data flows for the data sets. And in the end, uh, you'll see how to utilize uh, uh, Power BI data sets with XMLA endpoint and then correspondingly data flows as well. Uh, a bit about myself, uh, I'm uh, a Power BI architect and evangelist working with Power BI for the past five years and uh, uh, currently working with Centric Consulting and I love to talk about Power BI, Power Platform in general and their integrations uh, with uh, code platforms as well. Now let's move to today's topic. Uh, the first topic is that uh, how you see the traditional Power BI development. Now, uh, traditionally what we have seen, uh, you'll find that uh, we tend to work with Excel or any other data sources and develop a uh, huge Power BI report. And often uh, people, be, be, just being the low code platform, uh, there are a lot of users who aren't so well versed with technology, but uh, are able to learn and I'm so glad that they are um, and uh, develop brilliant Power BI reports out of that. Now the problem starts happening when this needs to be scaled up right there. Then uh, they have developed something and now other users want to come in and uh, develop, use that report, develop something out of it. And what you see is that uh, if working with an import model, you'll of often have uh, reports running into 300, 400 megabyte size or even larger uh, up to a gig too. So those Power BI reports become quite uh, cumbersome to handle. Uh, you cannot develop them uh, in parallel and then uh, you start getting into different issues so, like uh, growing report size, right, which I already mentioned. Uh, then uh, even if all the users try to come in, then they start developing their own measures, uh, their own changes in the model, and then they start developing data silos. So that is like multiple users coming in, adding their transformations, model changes and in the end, it becomes pretty difficult to merge all those changes, changes together. So uh, these all things start happening and then there you'll have end up having different versions of those reports. So uh, that is one thing that uh, is troubling and uh, starts creating issues with development, maintenance, etc. Then challenges in parallel development, which is uh, why uh, we are looking to you know, separate out these models. So this makes our case here for why we should try to separate out that modeling part and the right transformations part from the Power BI report itself. And that is where we'll start it. So it's going to be a hands-on uh, and I'll be pulling up a Power BI report and then we'll uh, start from there. So this is what we are trying to achieve here that the Power BI data set would be independent and then uh, we'll have the Power BI reports working connected live so that multiple developers can work with this particular data set, single data set. And at the same time, uh, different kind of development can also happen with this data set like paginated reports, um, XMLA endpoint based refreshers, etc. So everything onto the data set. So it's a sales sample for Power BI desktop like uh, we look at uh, our source. So I have these all tables. And this is drawing from some particular Excel. Oh, ACCDB. All right. And now what we'll start with is publishing this report to the, that is its data set. We want to be able to have a data set in the service. Can publish in a few seconds. So this is our data set and this is the report, right? So we see that this is now right now published into the service. And uh, this report, if you want anyone wants to come in and work with this particular report, uh, you'll have to actually download that report and then work with it. Or uh, and that will like uh, be creating this data set, uh, adding changes to this data set. And uh, when the user publishes that report again, what you'll have end up is like uh, refresh this refresh data set in the service. So we see that the challenge here is not multiple people are would be able to work with this particular report altogether. So what we'll do is we'll see how to you know uh, separate this out. For instance, you have this uh, current report that is housing a model. Uh, we have these tables in place. Um, 
right relationships in place and then uh, you have a lot of development that is already has been done so you cannot build it from scratch uh, another report or even copy pasting of issues becomes a cumbersome task in larger reports so what we do is uh, go to transform to get rid of this model entirely all right so we see that uh, we have deleted the entire model and this is our report uh, so it closed and applied and it's going to break right so it's pretty much an empty report right pretty much uh, similar to a template so now one thing that we have uh, is like we have deployed the data set already so that is one thing uh, that will be a prerequisite uh, for this to separate out this uh, the model from this report we have already deployed it and now we are working to connect it live to that particular data set so we click all the data sets now this will select this data set the one that we want this report to be connected to we'll see that the things will come back live for this report so what we did is we actually separated out uh, the data set from the report itself after deploying it and eventually ended up uh, retaining the report uh, visual part so all the visuals are re uh, back here and we see that uh, the data set is uh, separated out so right now it is only connected like to the power bi data set this particular data set only thing with this is one thing to take care of is that when we do this uh, we need to actually um, keep the original report so uh, in general what we'll do is uh, the or the original report that is deployed uh, all the visuals will be deleted from it and, uh, and it you could insert a tab in it and say that data set only report so what we'll have there is the data set only report and then uh, all of the reports would be connecting like to that particular data set let's come back and see what benefit it will provide us uh, it's like uh, if we are to supposed to create another development on this report like uh, we start with a new report right so pulling up a new report and uh, when we switch to get data we could select to power bi data sets here so that has gone on my other screen i'm not able to pull that but uh, so the new power bi report that we are creating here is also now connected to the same data set and we have these uh, you see we have all the tables in there to you uh, the model in place to use that on the fresh report so now developer a and developer b both are able to work uh, using the same data set the advantage that we get is uh, the anyone who has a strong knowledge of uh, modeling concepts and transformations they can take care of uh, this part and then multiple users uh, also self service users could uh, come up use that data set and uh, build their own reports from that particular data set so that is one uh, really uh, beneficial part of it looking at it uh, you see dev 1 dev 2 dev 3 dev 4 dev 5 uh, any number of people can work through that data set now and do parallel development uh, that's that will help in scaling of the power bi development and uh, coordinating work in larger teams too now we'll also see power bi report builder uh, because i mentioned that and how a paginated report development can also be done on the same data set. here we are so this is power bi report builder you see on, on power bi report builder this is the tool that is used for building paginated reports uh, if someone is not familiar with it uh, the power bi report builder tool is used to design the paginated reports for power bi uh, which are pixel perfect crisp reports and uh, are uh, pretty much similar to old uh, ssrs reporting services platform uh, the interface is pretty much similar so but it does come up with the uh, Azure connectivity uh, built in, like Azure Analysis Services, Azure SQL Database, and Power BI datasets too. So that is uh, one thing that is inherent here. Now, if we click this Power BI dataset, since these are two separate tools, I'll need to log in again. So it shows in from uh, the list of datasets that I have. And this is the data set that we are referring to. And we'll see that it pulls up the that particular data set for your further development on paginated reports. 
So if we look at that, uh, we'll have uh, uh, we have all these tables, right, which we see on the Power BI report pulling from the same data set, and we have that in place here for working further with uh, the Power BI data set. So uh, we are not going into how the further development of the uh, page generated report, but uh, the purpose is just to showcase here. So I'm not going to put in a DAX query there and uh, get the result set here, but uh, uh, the idea was to show over how to connect it. So I think that that uh, is represented. These are the things that we have been covering, like separating data set from existing Power BI PBX and restoring PBX. Uh, now, uh, the uh, other thing that we have covered is live data sets with paginated. We want to also look at one of the points that I was mentioning, uh, refreshing these data sets with XML endpoint connectivity. That is another thing that can be set up in uh, the Power BI development that when we are doing it. So this live data set can have its own refresh schedule from the obvious service. Um, in, for individual table level refreshes, we do need uh, uh, we, the XML endpoint connectivity. So I was just kind of trying to bring that in here. Now how to connect it here? Uh, I'll pull up that part as well. So if we go to the workspace settings and workspace connection strings, this is where uh, we are able to see it and uh, it should be at least in a premium per user or premium capacity, the workspace to be enabled to connect for XML endpoint. So I'm going to copy it over and when we connect it this is what we put in the analysis services keep your tabler and then you're connecting that uh, you'll be able to see all the databases that are in there so we'll quickly refresh it And we see that our data set is here. So this is like assessing it through SSMS, uh, the Power BI particular data set that we had created and we are working live with another, uh, uh, all the reports. And these are all its uh, individual tables that are showing now. Now, uh, individually processing the tables, uh, that can be done in this manner. So if we are to process product, so it will be uh, picking that up from the source and processing that table. Similarly, other ones. Or we could also generate the uh, the, the reports. Uh, I mean, uh, we could also generate the scripts for it. So here's the XML script uh, that could be used for these particular data sets, uh, which can be uh, you know scheduled to or run individually for refreshing any of these tables uh, when we are working with these any separated out data sets. So this is actually next level, not directly linked with working with live data sets, but uh, when you separate out the model, we tend to, uh, as best practices, separate out uh, everything from the uh, for the environment, including the refreshes. So uh, this is something that comes in handy there. Uh, we could schedule refreshes individually, create XMLA scripts and schedule them as well on uh, look at that. While we are here, uh, one thing off the topic that uh, I wanted to show was that these this uh, data sets could also be scripted and created a copies of those. So if we were to create a copy of this particular data set, uh, Right, good. It a uh, copy. And uh, we could create it here. So that also helps in, uh, for instance, you want to create a test and a production data set, um, and you don't want to actually deploy it all over again. 
this is one process that helps you uh, in handling those live data sets uh, in creation of uh, uh, separate environments. So for instance, you want to uh, create a production copy of it or a uh, QA copy of it. So this is what can come in handy and uh, without having to deploy over again and again, uh, this could be created from uh, using XML endpoint connectivity too. So you see this data set is created on Power BI Service 2 um, and that is with this one is without the report because it's uh, created by using XML endpoint connectivity. So this would then be refreshed and uh, you'll have a uh, copy of that running, a dev copy or a production copy. So that is how it is recommended that you handle your live data sets, uh, not deploying actually from its base report, but uh, using its script and uh, XML endpoint script, generating it from here and then creating copies of those. I hope it is not getting boring. <laughs> Everything is hands on. Um, please do pitch in with questions if you have any at any point. Abhinav, I have a question. This is Kirill. Yeah. Um, I also put it in the chat. Um, so when you talked about separating data set or reports from the data set, right? Um, that gives the your report developers kind of the ability to create your their own report level measures, right? Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that whole life cycle, right? Could to kind of like bring them back into the main data, data set while you test it? Have you have you done that? Yeah, uh, so one thing there is uh, we do uh, since uh, uh, when we are focusing on self-servicing of the reports, uh, what we tend to do is uh, we allow those measures, creation of those measures, because uh, depending on the report level measures, what, what visuals that they are creating, what business wants to use for their own reports, uh, which they are creating, um, it is permitted and they may be pertaining to their individual uh, part of the report. So that is permitted, but uh, for the uh, mostly business level measures or something like uh, uh, you know any additional transformation or calculated columns uh, those all need to be taken care of, uh, in the actual model based report so yep. Yep. i think really uh, that is across business uh, you you see uh, any new uh, anything like for instance you were uh, heading area and then you have uh, something uh, related to uh, a geographical description uh, for your for instance your geographical distribution is getting a new entity in place for instance uh, it was up to state level and then it, uh, you are getting into uh, the county level so then you are creating county level measures and then uh, they need to be spread across so that particular change i'll recommend that you do in the parent data set so that it is available across all for, for all developers once it is refreshed um, yeah that makes sense thank you and those changes will descend on all the developers. The moment they refresh their reports, uh, they will automatically be able to see those changes in their reports. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I think I need to reconnect. But yes, uh, it has created this data set, and uh, I'm not sure why. So we have the copy also here, and uh, we also have this particular data set sitting in here. So in the users that those who are connecting to this particular workspace, they'll be able to see the dev or production uh, data set that uh, needs to be referred for further environments or further copies. Uh, the second step uh, that I would like to mention is uh, data flows. Now getting into the next level of it. The first level of it is working with your data sets, uh, working with the central data sets. That is uh, creating all your reports from that data set, separating out its refreshes from um, uh, the regular development, um, creation of individual table refreshes depending on the business change. They can actually be triggered uh, based on event, a particular table refresh uh, 
data gets updated, you could trigger that refresh altogether onto that data set. And then those changes uh, correspondingly descending onto all, all users uh, for their own reports that they are developing. The next part comes in like uses of data flows. So what you see is if you click this, we start, we do see that uh, there's something called as data flow for prep, clean, and transform the data. So uh, right now, if we understand the Power BI report creation, right, we prep, clean, and transform model data, and then uh, start development of the report all in single Power BI report. The first step was that we created, uh, we separated out the data set. So that is was the separation of one entity from other. And now we'll see how we could uh, get out that transformation logic also out of the particular data set. So for that, uh, we'll start with a data flow. And uh, just to give it a picture, so this is what uh, this data set will now uh, start getting data from the data flow. And then that data set uh, is in turn being used by multiple reports. So what can come in place here is this one data set and then we'll have another data set. So we'll have two data sets. See, it's not. <laughs> what don't you paste? I wanted to create a copy of it to end the scene. So the picturization would be like you'll have two data sets in place. Um, this is another data set, and this one will also be taking its uh, transformations from the same data flow. So with the same source, similar transformations now you'll have data set separate, right? You could create uh, uh, further relationships into this, further calculations, but it's still utilizing the same transformation logic that was in place in the original data set. So we'll separate out this also from this particular data set, and then you could end up creating multiple data sets out of those transformations. So it was like if this was happening at an enterprise level, you're creating one, but one data flow there and uh, for separate business processes uh, from that particular data flow, uh, people are generating their own master data sets and from those master data sets, separate developers are able to connect to that particular data sets and create their own reports connecting like to them. So the other stage. So see, we are actually trying to, this should actually, the way it should flow is you create your data flow, you create your data sets, and then uh, start creation of your or where reports, uh, whether connecting live or direct. Um, but what why we are seeing it uh, reverse engineering way is because uh, this is what we see in day to day life that like right one single report uh, working out of uh, single source and uh, uh, growing in size, etc. So while we are reverse engineering it, we are seeing that how, why do we need to break it out and uh, how it needs to happen. So we are actually going the reverse way just to have a better understanding of this. So, Now creation of data flow. Uh, now this is something not straightforward that we'll be able to do uh, from our uh, uh, like the way we did uh, deletion, there was a trick around here. Um, for this, uh, even if the you want to ex import your model from somewhere, that is like uh, we you have a JSON and you want to import our model, we actually need to to be able to export uh, from your current uh, Power BI report. You need a particular tool. So far, I've seen only Marcus has created that tool. So uh, I was able to export one of the JSON. I do have in place uh, this this particular JSON. This is for that control source sample file that we are referring. Uh, we'll look at it later. Uh, so this is for importing the model. Like we want to import model from uh, current uh, existing file. Now um, linking tables from other data flows. We do not have other data flows as of now. Uh, that could be used here. So we'll start with defining new tables. That is like add new tables. So, 
So uh, we have, you'll see all those sources that you, while developing your Power BI report, uh, similar ones are available here and more and more are getting here added. I actually have to pull that off the screen. Uh, there's one in that I, one database name that I didn't want to disclose. So I'm just putting in that. I'll pull it back. Just a second. So I've keyed in those uh, and I'm using a on-premise connection that I have. I'll be trying to connect to that. It is actually throwing me out there. Uh, there's some issue with that connectivity. So I'll go back and look at one existing data for that I have. Now, uh, if we were to reuse any part of it, uh, we would have had to actually go to the advanced editor and uh, come over here in the advanced editor and paste its code here. So that is the one way that you could replicate uh, the transformations that you have in place on the existing Power BI report uh, to be able to transform them to the data flow. A little tedious exercise, but uh, that is how it needs to be at the moment. I'm pulling in one report uh, just to see that how we can copy over that particular code. While that is pulling up, let me show you how the uh, JSON for this looks like. So if we were to be able to export a particular uh, this JSON out of our existing Power BI report, so how it would have looked like. And if I am to be, um, if I have an existing data flow, uh, from which I am able to export a JSON. So this is what it will look like. So you'll have the information uh, in place, uh, the tables, the met queries, metadata, etc. Um, all the tables uh, information in the form of metadata, right, uh, in place for this particular uh, JSON, and that could be imported here. So we'll see if we import that all together. Uh, it is a straightforward creation for a data flow, uh, but if that is not available. What we do is we connect to the same source and then we uh, pull up the Power BI report that we want to replicate for its uh, data flow. We'll copy over the Power Query from there to this particular data set. So it's representational. Uh, it's not the same one that we are doing here, uh, but this would help here, like all the transformations we copy over, or uh, even the even it entirely. If the source is same and your uh, you do not have any um, credential difference there, right? Environment difference there, so those could be copied over to the to Power Query here as well. So it would start getting uh, its data from this new data source and then you'll be able to have it, your data flow up and running so I'm discarding it as of now so this is one that i had created earlier uh, this was the same tables that we are using in our um, the power bi report that we are replicating initially so we'll see how we are able to uh, now use this particular uh, one instead of uh, or current, so I'm pulling it again. Here I'm pulling the initial Power BI report that we started working with. Uh, I'm pulling it over again. A lot is running today. <laughs> Sorry about this. So this is where we started with, right? We have it. We'll try to add the uh, data flow now here to pull data from the data flow. So we see these data sources right in here, Power BI data flows as well. So uh, we'll connect to Power BI data flow. So once it connects to the data flows, uh, we are able to bring the same uh, tables into our data set here. And uh, then uh, these visuals will start working with those tables instead of the current ones. So this is our data flow, uh, that the one that is open here. It's like the service is slow. So pull in, uh, for instance, the product table. And if we were to look at uh, the initial product table and this new product table, right? 
So this could be discarded and this could be used. So uh, we'll actually be not be using the direct uh, connection to the uh, data set connection to the source that is currently in this file. Instead, this will be pulling it from the data flow. And then that uh, data set would be deployed to the service back. So that uh, that would be used as a live data set. So this table is from the flow and. Uh, right, so it is. For instance, this one here, it was pulling its brand name, class name, and manufacturer from it. So we could probably use brand name from the new table that we have. And similarly, uh, others can also be used uh, from the new table. This table is back here, but now it is connected to the, the table via the data flow uh, and not with the data set, current data set. This is one change that has happened here. And uh, that is uh, data flows. Uh, the way we saw that we could separate out easily, uh, right? I would mention again, it's not very easy to separate out uh, data flows uh, from your data sets. So uh, it is recommended that when we start the development, we start uh, with using the data flows. Uh, from scratch when we are building it. If that doesn't happen, then uh, the best case scenario is co copying over the power queries that we saw. Uh, once the source is established, copying over those power queries to the data sets. Then coming back to the report, um, the way I did was like replacing visuals in those fields. Uh, that is also again a tedious task. Um, so uh, other one could be that you could, uh, while you're using it, Right, uh, you could go to the product table, the one that is here. Um, pull up the new one, right? New source and uh, new description from there, uh, and put up it into the the current one. So that way, your relationships won't get spoiled, and uh, uh, you'll be able to imply that and use those current tables in there without uh, having an impact on your visuals and having to redo the visuals. So this part, uh, this is one that could, that's a workaround that could be done here. Uh, that's again a tedious task, but then uh, if you're doing it uh, after development of certain reports, then uh, this is the way. You can also refer to uh, Marcus article uh, I'll ping that in uh, this he has a, on GitHub he has put in a tool altogether an external tool which is able to export a JSON out of your current data set and that's a marvelous tool. Um, I, I installed that yesterday and we had to pull out a JSON. Uh, I didn't have enough time to for this session to demonstrate that but uh, uh, probably we could take up that again whenever um, or when Marcus is here, probably could show up that tool. I'm not sure if he has shown that uh, already. If that was available, we'll go back and see how we could uh, create this out of your uh, JSON available. So here, what I did is I imported that particular JSON uh, that was exported in our uh, the initial one that I showed and op which we had opened on Visual Studio, that particular JSON. Let me see this one that is created. Uh, this vector data flow, new data flow. It is it is created out of the uh, JSON that we had exported out of the one of the initial data flows, or that could be imported, uh, exported using the tool uh, to our data flow. It has all the tables in here now. Um, uh, this is the simplistic approach uh, to very few. Have this model model JSON uh, in place there. Just to go back and see uh, what we covered there then today, right? Uh, this was the data flows, um, and from data flows, you could create data sets and then the reports. Uh, we looked back from how we could separate out from Power BI desktop report in a, uh, currently that is using an import model and uh, separate out the data set from it. And then if uh, your data flow is not there, how to create that data flow and then uh, copy that over into uh, 
your data set and use that data flow into your data set for uh, building a fresh data set out of that. Now uh, the recommended approaches, right? Always from the data flow, then the data set that connected live that data set, and then uh, you need to you can have multiple developers working with that particular data set. That's the recommended one. Just in case you do not have, uh, you follow the approach that we followed today for the better understanding of it. Uh, that was pretty much that we wanted to cover. Uh, if we have any questions, we can we can relook re at uh, some of the exercise or anything. Uh, Augustine, do we have anything? So, so no, not a question in the chat. So if anybody has any question, can unmute or type in the chat. Yeah, there is a one question from Kirill in the chat. Oh, sorry, I, I mistyped. Let me let me clarify. What um, tables are uh, prime candidates for data flows? Right. If uh, you were to consider like building data flows for your organization, right? What would be the main candidates? Like dim date, typically, or a date table? Um, date could is uh, date can be there, but uh, date could still be recreated into your individual data. Um, so uh, it would be majorly comprising of your business tables, uh, uh, your enterprise tables. Uh, for instance, if we are looking at uh, this particular sales report, so all the tables that we had pulled in here, um, channel, geography, right? Typically, these will be there. So date will be not here. Um, mostly, uh, we may be looking at uh, having that at the uh, still at the data set level. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, yes, uh, anything that business dimension tables, uh, your uh, facts like sales, uh, these all, these are good candidates for it. Okay, thank you. Okay, there, is there any other questions? Uh, anything you can unmute yourself? If not, then uh, I'll be taking over the closing. Thanks a lot, uh, Amina, for this presentation. Um, thanks everybody for staying with us um, in the evening or morning, <laughs> uh, depending on where you are. Um, for the next sessions uh, on the, the 17th, uh, we have uh, Thomas uh, with his uh, session about sharing and uh, on the 24th, Chris Wagner uh, with his session on uh, data gods and how to become one. And um, yeah, with that, um, you can uh, join us um, as, as uh, Augustine already mentioned in the beginning um, or look at the recording of this. Um, it will be posted on the YouTube channel. Um, it's also in the chat, uh, the YouTube channel, so you can revisit this session or any of the other sessions that you might have missed and uh, share it. And uh, we're hoping to see you all next time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Augustine. Thanks, Kerstin, for having me. Thanks. Thanks for being Thank here. You,